In this video, I will run a sushi bar, fight giant underwater creatures, and help out an ancient civilization. Welcome to... I was chilling on the beach and got a call from Cobra, who had a business proposition for me. I would become his diver and ingredients provider for his newly opened business, a sushi bar. So I immediately flew over and started diving. He explained that this blue hole where I was supposed to dive changes every time you go down there, with new fishes and areas to explore, so we can have fish from all over the world, fresh and ready to serve at his bar. After filling my ship with fish, Cobra introduced me to Bancho. He's the cook or sushi master. He has strong samurai vibes and is a total badass. <laughs> Bancho told me that he only cooks, so after fishing every day I have to serve the customers as well. After an earthquake, the bar was damaged, and the first 100 gold I had to spend was on repairs. In the night I got this cutscene. The fuck? There seems to be more than Cobra wanted to tell me. Which was very intriguing since I love horrors from the deep, as you can see in my dredge video. I also got to know Duff, who will forge me some weapons to use in the blue hole, since everything you bring back from the hole deteriorates if you bring it to the surface. I wish I had a weapon earlier, since I died. Which isn't too bad, you only waste one trip down. So after Cobra saved me, I served more customers. And on day 3, an archaeologist named Dr. Bacon stopped me and asked me to find some artifacts for him, to prove that there was the Sea People civilization. So I dove down and found Dr. Bacon's artifact, and witnessed this. What the fuck? That's so cool. After that I went over to Bancho and we made a Cookstar account together. It's like Instagram for cooks, I guess. Anyways, on this app I can increase the reputation of the restaurant which brings in more customers. At night came the old boss of Bancho, and he wanted to prove himself to her by serving her shark head. And you guessed right, the next day I headed out to bring him a shark. So after catching it, Bancho prepared the shark head for Miss Yoshi, and she went all food wars on me. Day 5 was nothing special. I caught some new fish, dove a little deeper, and welcomed our new waitress. I'll be right back with that for you. I hate it. I hate it. Next day I followed the dragon radar that Dr. Bacon gave me earlier. All the way to this ancient looking door, which was blocked by rocks. So Copa suggested we use bombs to open it. But his delivery ship sunk, so I need to find his drone parts so he can retrieve the rest of the cargo. Which happens to have a bomb on board? How convenient is that? Another bustling night later, we invited the critics from Cookster to take a look at our bar. After reaching Silver Status, I collected all the drone pieces for Cobra, so he got me the bomb. At night, I had my first bad restaurant day. Cooking was too slow since I put my hired cook on waiter duty. So we got a few annoyed customers. The next night was way better though. I also learned that you have to replenish the wasabi at one point. But that just meant that the restaurant was buzzing. Hey, how's the burger? Shit's buzzing. Aye, aye. Mm -hmm. I finally got around to the cave with the bomb. So after opening it, I explored the insides. Dr. Bacon was right. This was proof that an ancient sea people civilization exists. I heard voices in the cave that Dr. Bacon did not hear. So something fishy is going on here. After resurfacing, John Watson of the activist group Sea Blue warned me about not disturbing the ecosystem in the blue hole. Or else. Lie down on the ground. Or else. Cobra told me to be cautious with the Sea Blue cause they might be shady. So I collected fish for the rest of the day and hired Itsuki, who had every stat at one, so I was intrigued. Duff also had a job for me. Since his statue didn't arrive, I was supposed to retrieve it from the sunken cargo ship. But a giant tentacle grabbed his package. Yoink. Yoink. 
so I made quick work of the wreckage and fought that animal-loving octopus. Defeating him also freed one of the sea people. After cutting the tentacle up and retrieving the box, Duff gave me a headlamp, with which I can go even deeper into the dark abyss. We also had a party with all the guys from work, where we ate this huge tentacle and had a couple of drinks. John Watson was watching us closely and loaded a grenade launcher, like he was the star in a 90s action flick. Consider that a divorce. I didn't have to wait long for John, since he was waiting for me in the water the next morning. On day 12, now that I had a flashlight, I ventured into the depths, caught plenty of fish and even a big one. Down here, as expected, were the sea people, but of course I didn't understand a single word that they said. But Dr. Bacon had an idea and needed some materials to build a translator. Otto stopped by and wanted to eat a dish from his childhood. So he taught me how to catch these Mario 64 looking eels. Turns out they are only catchable at night, so I had that on my to-do list for the next day. I saw a giant ass whale and waited for nightfall so I can give Otto his dream meal. Otto of course loved this and built a fish farm overnight as a thank you. Otto invited me over the next morning and showed me the place. Basically I now have the ability to catch fish and let them reproduce in this controlled environment. I called the critics from Cookstar again and got upgraded to a gold tier restaurant. I finally visited the sea people again and these two were pretty annoying. Suwam, who tried to take all the credit for the work I did, and Ramo, the Sea People's chief's daughter. Plus the game threw an escort mission at me, and even the worst kind. One where you have to carry someone and protect them, since Ramo got injured from the giant squid. After a cutscene, Ramo and I got teleported into enemies, and I had to start over. Yeah, and you spawn me in the middle of... 20 of these? What the shit? Are you kidding me? Wow. Well, that was stupid. We reached our destination just to find the way to the village closed off by rocks. After a quick chat with Dr. Beckin, who gave me the tools I needed to clear the rocks, I opened the path down. There was this giant sea creature and the two wanted me to check it out, but I needed to upgrade my suit more so I can even dive that deep. Also the last couple of days I was preparing for the jellyfish festival, catching jellyfish so I can get some festival themed dishes on my tables. The night was crazy busy, but we made it to a 5 star rating. On day 18 I caught some tuna for the festival that will happen soon and took a photo of a giant stingray at night. The next day was pretty eventful, since I fought two bosses, one for Maki's side quest, After retrieving a memo her dead dad left behind, she decided to learn the ways of cooking from Bancho. And I needed to fight the other boss to reach the Sea People village. They had problems with tremors and the villagers got sick, so Ramo recommended the human technology to help her father and the village with the problems. After a brief discussion and some prejudice against humans, the chief decided that he wanted my help, but I have to win the trust of the townsfolk. On day 20 I did just that and helped them out. Mm -hmm. 
On the same day, there was the Tuna Festival, and I made the biggest amount of money yet. Dude. Otto had another trick up his sleeve and showed me how to grow rice on a farm. I also petted a baby whale, which made my day. So cute. Bye bye. Throughout the rest of the day and the one after that, I helped the sea people and gained enough trust to help them with their tremor problem. Apparently the glacier under the village and the divine tree keeps melting and I was sent to take a look at that. But the chief lost the key so first on the list was retrieving it. At night Darth had a dream. Thank god I'm a guitar hero god. So I went and grabbed the key out of the secret cave. In there were these sea people zombies called Gradons. After escaping narrowly with my life, John Watson came for another round. So I home run his ass. gave the key to the chief, who told me about the divine fruit and how it made the sea people turn into these gardons. Back in the day a sea people technician tinkered with the fruits and mutated the sea people. After the shift in the bar we got a scene with Dr. Bacon, who discovered a new cave, in it the history of men and sea people. They were friends once, and after the sea people gave the divine fruit to the humans, some of the humans died and started attacking the sea people. This misunderstanding led to the sea people mistrusting mankind and vice versa. Dr. Bacon found this ancient breathing device and was attacked by pirates. Bitch! Oh. The days are getting longer. Every morning I tend to my rice and veggie farm and every evening I go and check on the fish farm. In preparation for the shark festival I focused on hunting them down. I went night fishing to hunt a huge ass shrimp. Is that a man riding a shrimp? <laughs> After clearing my way to a bunch of frozen gateways, I found this Dark Souls boss. So the way to the glacier area was now free and the chief gave me a divine tree cloth to make a suit so I won't freeze to death down there. In the morning on day 28 I gave Cooper and Dr. Bacon the cloth and they said they have to brainstorm until the evening. So on this day I upgraded my restaurant to platinum tier and had a little chat with Sammy, Otto's son, who is a rapper and a chicken wrangler. I'm Sammy, I stay automatic, money add and multiply, I call it mathematics. To build a suit Dr. Bacon needed mechanical parts that were hidden in a secret sea blue hideout. So just like Solid Snake, we snuck in and grabbed them. I used the next day to catch more sharks for the festival, while waiting for the suit to finish. Day 30 was the big day. In the morning Dr. Bacon gave me the new suit and I dove into the glacier area. To think it goes even deeper with a whole new area to explore was kinda wild to me. But here I was, catching new fish and even bigger sharks. Since 
my cargo was full after a couple of minutes, I needed to retreat for now. At night, the game threw even another new mechanic at me, Cooking Mama. On day 31, I grabbed some more glacier fish and discovered a closed door with some ancient text in front, which Dr. Bacon helped me to translate. Apparently, this door leads to one of three switches that I need to find for the Divine Tree control room to open. And in there might be the solution that the sea people seek to rescue their Divine Tree. So I thought I did a lot on day 30. But oh man, day 32 was even bigger. Just in the morning of this day, I saved a baby manatee, rode a beluga through an obstacle course, fought a giant jellyfish with said beluga, flipped a second switch, solved puzzles where I had to control me and Suwam at the same time, fought a buzzsaw shark, flipped the third switch, fought John Watson yet again, fought a Chronosaurus, discovered that the hatch to the control room is blocked by roots. After this eventful morning, Dr. Bacon told me that he needed two days to open a passage into the control room. So after all that hard work, back to the thing I came here to do, run a fucking restaurant. So I spent my time waiting on the drone with the usual stuff, fishing, farming and serving customers. On day 34, I went down to the control room and after a few puzzles, I fought a real reason for the earthquakes, the Javi. This thing from ancient times which got mutated by this weird sea people technician or scientist. With the combined powers of the villagers, we blew it to smithereens. The earthquake stopped and everybody was happy. So we had a little party to celebrate our victory. Yeah.